So welcome to everyone um, to our virtual uh, center school kindergarten parent guardian orientation session um, with lots of information we're going to share today. Um, my name is Mary Ruth Diamond and I am the very, very proud principal of center school. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to listen to our presentation today and all that we're going to share. Um, we are going to share some new information um, as well as information that was already sent out to everyone. Um, so just kind of to review that and make sure that everybody uh, has a, an understanding of what, what's been sent out. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to jot them down. We are going to send out a Google form um, to kind of collect questions and create an FAQ uh, document. So if you have questions, um, again, just jot them down. There'll be some time in the breakout room. We'll also, um, we'll also try to um, create that document as well so that you have that as, uh, moving forward. As we go through the slides, um, you're, you're going to likely hear me say again and repeat several times, this has not been decided yet or we're still working on that or there's just not a lot of information in that yet. Um, so I just want you to be prepared for that in advance. Um, there's still many unknowns regarding what school is going to look like next year. Um, and that can feel a little unsettling for all of us, not you know, for parents, for teachers, for staff, really we're all a little unsettled by that. But what I can assure you with complete confidence is that your children are going to have a safe and nurturing, secure classroom environment to come and learn in every day, no matter what the, what the challenges are, no matter what the situation is, um, that together we will figure out how to navigate whatever happens to come our way. So please know that we are, we are here for you. We, um, we really want to, uh, we have an amazing team um, and we are here as you make that transition to kindergarten. Um, our staff has had training in social emotional learning um, in trauma informed practices and instructional strategies um, so that we can really meet each student where they are and help move them forward. So there are a lot of unknowns and you're gonna he keep me hearing me say that, but again, we are, we are well positioned to uh, encounter those together and, and really um, work things out so that we have our uh, students' best interests um, at the heart of what we do. Um, so I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Uh, yep, hold on. There we go. Okay. So I wanted to start by introducing our team um, to you. As I shared, my name is Mary Rose Diamond. This is my third year as principal at Center School. Uh, I was the principal at Huckleberry Hill for nine years before that. That's our two through four school for those of you who are new to Brookfield. Um, and I was an assistant principal in Greenwich um, prior to coming to, to Brookfield. Um, I do have two children. One is just finishing her first year in kindergarten. Um, and I also have a preschool student who is actually, he's a, a finished his first year of preschool here at Center School. Um, and so I just, I'm sharing that because I, I do have some firsthand experience and knowledge of what you might be going through as we kind of wrestle with decisions and challenges and all those kinds of things um, as parents of young children. So um, I, I, I feel your, uh, I can empathize well with, with what you've been, you've been going through. Um, I want to take a minute to, um, oh, I just put this up and now I'm going to take it down again, um, to, to introduce our team. So I, I, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Um, so I'm going to uh, introduce you to our team. They're just going to do a little wave. Um, I just want to be able to put uh, faces with names because I know that you're doing or, uh, registration, that kind of thing, and we, it's all online now. Um, so these are people that you're going to come to know and love very well I think, uh, over time. Um, so I'm going to start with Lisa Ruggles. Um, one of our secretaries and Claire Dana Savage, our other secretary, both of them are very uh, instrumental in our process for registration. So um, those are two names that you learn. Whenever you email CES office or the CES registrar, that's who you're getting. Um, Beth O'Connor is our school nurse. So she's gonna uh, do a little bit of discussion later on in our presentation. Melissa Baldwin is our special ed supervisor um, for pre-K to five. So um, she's also very involved in our placement and our screenings and all of that. Um, Dr. Meyer Glazer is our school psychologist. Again, um, very involved with our, with our kindergarten team and making sure that everyone has what they need. Uh, Kevin Holly is actually a district um, person who works with our English language learners. Um, so Mrs. Holly is joining us today. Again, you can kind of put a face with a name. And then we have our kindergarten teachers that I wanted to introduce. We have um, Sarah Doherty. Um, we have uh, Shannon Payne, Sean Knapp, Laura Lynch, Nancy Sommerfeld, 
Renee Richardson, Michelle Colucci, uh, Katerina Prada. And I think I've got, I'm just scanning to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Um, if I miss someone, please tell me. And Roy Kirikidis, I wanted to also introduce, is our um, special ed teacher for, um, for kindergarten. So Roy works in classrooms a lot. She'll be getting to know your children, whether or not they have um, plans um, that she would service, she will definitely be, uh, be there um, in classrooms and that kind of thing. And thank you, Ms. Kalushi reminded me that uh, Alyssa Larson is one of our kindergarten teachers who was not able to be with us today. I thought we were missing one. Um, and, and so Alyssa is uh, not, again, uh, not able to join us today, but also um, instrumental with our team. Um, so I also wanted to, I'm going to go back and share my screen again. So if any of you are Zoom um, uh, fatigued and would like to turn off your cameras, teachers and staff, please feel free to do so. Um, I know that we, we spend a lot of time on Zoom these days. Um, and I wanted to just mention on this slide that uh, the, the last member of our team on this slide is you. So we really, really take our partnerships with um, staff um, excuse me, with, with families uh, to be, they're very important to us. So um, you are a really integral part of our team as well. Okay, so as I've mentioned, uh, we do, uh, we value our relationships with families um, and we are here to support you. We know and appreciate what a huge transition this is to go um, to, to move into kindergarten from preschool, especially given um, the circumstances that we've all been living in the last year and a half. Um, so what happens in students early year of schooling really shapes their mindsets about school and their self concepts and these are things that are going to impact them for the rest of their lives. And we know that we understand that we know that the foundation that we provide for your children here at center is going to set them up for success, both in life and career so we're very uh, fortunate to have an amazingly supportive and creative and innovative PTO. And we're lucky Brenda Kuiper, who is our PTO president, is with us this evening. Um, she's going to share some information about the Center School PTO. So Brenda, please, I'm going to go move to your slides here. And there we go. Brenda, are you still with us? Uh -oh. I am. Hi, I'm Brenda Kuiper. I have uh, two children. Caleb is a third grader and my daughter Elizabeth is a first grader. Um, so I am the current PTO president and it's my last year as my daughter is moving out of center school. Um, but for all center school parents, uh, parents and guardians of any center school child from pre-K through first grade is automatically a member of the PTO. Um, we're a nonprofit 501c3 organization. There are no membership fees to join. Um, the PTO is a 100% volunteer driven um, collaboration between the parents, the teachers, the staff, the administration. Um, we sort of focus on four main areas. The biggest area is supporting our children, the teachers, and the staff at Center School. Uh, we also focus on cultural events. Those can be assemblies from Veterans Day or um, Bubble Mania, which we've had in the past, and author visits. Um, to this year, we've done family engagement projects every month um, in lieu of the fact that we can't hold physical assemb assemblies. Um, we've also done some community outreach events uh, this past December. If you have older kids or if you drove around town, we did a huge food drive for the Brook Brookfield students. Um, we've also done a free book walk we just held last week for the students where the community donated a whole bunch of books and we lined the sidewalk in front of center school so that kids would have reading material for the summer um, completely free and we also do some fundraising and the fundraising is really important because it supports all of the things that we do to support the teachers, the staff, and the children. Um, one of the big, kind of not a huge uh, fundraiser per se for us, um, but a big community aspect is the spirit wear that children wear. Um, so once a month they do a community meeting and children are invited to wear their Brookfield apparel, which we sell through our website this year. Um, the link is on here and I'm sure it'll go home in uh, plenty of emails for, for parents to see. And you can order it now and it'll 
delivered um, by another member of the PTO. And you can go to the next slide. Um, so our PTO funds support various, various aspects. Um, we kind of had to rethink how we celebrate things that we've always done in the past. Um, so this year we did birthday celebrations by sending birthday cards in the mail to students. Um, in the past, they've been able to see their picture posted in the cafeteria, but this year lunches are in the classroom, so they didn't have that special aspect. So we wanted to still acknowledge the birthdays and just found a different way. Um, we've done reading initiatives where the PTO has purchased uh, a book for every family for uh, the One Book, One Read program. We purchase recess toys. We do bus driver appreciation, um, different aspects of school safety and monthly teacher and staff appreciation into the week long teacher and staff appreciation. There are teacher grants that money goes to. Uh, this year, we also supplied every child with a pencil box um, that had their name and a bunch of different supplies that they would need for school. And we've also done the family engagement projects that I've mentioned. And each month we've done something completely different and tried to uh, keep it with the, the season or the theme. Um, some of the most notable things we've done, we held a big pumpkin patch for the kids because they couldn't go on a field trip to the farm. Um, and the last one that we did, we gave every child two uh, fitness pedometers to get them moving and um, count their fitness steps. And that also corresponded with our fundraiser that we just ran. So. Um, we are having our last meeting June 8th at seven o'clock on Zoom. And that's where we're gonna elect a brand new PTO board for next school year. Um, if you have any questions about the school or about the PTO, you can always email us. And you can also find us on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brenda. We are fortunate, as I mentioned earlier, our PTO is fantastic. and We've had a great partnership um, with that group. So thank you for everything you've done this year. And I hope that everyone will be involved um, as you, your, your, uh, your child enrolls. So I'm going to just cover a couple things. It looks like there's a lot, but they're very quick, these slides. Um, and most of this information, again, you've already received in some way. Um, so it's just going to be our, our, just a little bit of a reminder. Um, so registration first, the parent portal is how we communicate pretty much everything with families placements, health and wellness updates, um, any district and school announcements. So you will be getting a letter from us. And I, again, I just wanted to thank all of you for bearing with us as we kind of work through this process um, to get our entire reg registration process online. Um, we've been working, our, Lisa and Claire have been working like tirelessly with our district team um, to get everything up and running. And we are, we've been told that June, June 2nd, um, we should be expecting um, uh, everything to be up and running. So June, we'll be able to send out the portal letters and you'll get a letter that has all the information you need in order to set up your account. So as soon as you set that up, um, the sooner the better, um, that'd be great. And then you'll be able to register and upload your required documents. So again, we keep reminding everybody to get those required documents ready now so that you're not searching for them. Um, and then as soon as, again, you get that letter, you set up your account um, and you can upload those documents. Lisa and Claire are experts at this. They will answer any questions you have. Um, just email them, call the office, and they will be able to help you with this. Uh, but again, we, as soon as you get the letter, um, you'll be able to, to get that process going. And now uh, Mrs. O'Connor is our school nurse. She is the other half of our major registration uh, efforts. So uh, Mrs. O'Connor, if you could just, um, if you wanna um, come back on, she's gonna share with us a little bit of information from her perspective on the medical component. Hi everyone, I'm looking forward to meeting all of you and um, having your students here at Center School. I just wanted to provide you my contact information and also um, this QR code will bring you to the Brookfield Public Schools Health Service website. Um, you could go here for general information and forms and there's also a tab 
um, at the top of the website that will bring you to specifically to Center School. And that has information pertaining um, just to our, our school. Um, you could also reach the health services website um, off of the Center School website um, and the uh, general uh, Brookfield Public Schools website. You could go to the next slide. I just wanted to go over some basics that you need to know as you're registering your child for kindergarten. Um, health physicals must be done within one year prior to the first day of school. So the first day of school is August 31st. So a physical done September 1st, 2020 or later is acceptable for kindergarten. The Physical must be done on the K, the kindergarten through 12th grade physical assessment form. Preschool physical forms, um, they're titled early childhood health assessment record, are not acceptable. And I find that um, when students have their physicals done in the fall and they are preschool students, the doctors tend to put those physicals on a preschool form. Your child doesn't need a whole nother physical, but the doctor will need to um, put that information on the correct form for me. As soon as you get uh, your child's physical and immunization and the portal is open, please upload that to the portal. Now I understand that some kids will go in June, July or August for their physicals. You don't have them at the ready when the portal opens. Uh, have a manager special. You may not have your forms ready on June 2nd when the portal opens. Um, just as soon as that physical and immunization record is ready in June, July, or August, please upload that so that I could process it. If your child has any health concerns that you wish to talk to me about, please contact me. Um, you could contact me via phone or email. If your child needs medication at school, we do need a doctor's order um, for that, whether it's prescription or over the counter. Um, you could get those forms from the website or you could contact me and I'll provide them to you. Any medication needs to be in its original container or box with the pharmacy label attached and an adult needs to bring that to school and drop it off. Every year on the portal, there is a section that's called the annual health medical update um, that is completed by the parent or guardian every year. And that gives you the opportunity to um, update me with any health information. And also on the, that update, it will also, uh, you will be able to grant um, permission for your child to have Tylenol at school. Um, so these are the basics that I want to share with you. I'm sure you may have other questions and you are welcome to contact me at any time. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. I appreciate it. Um, so some of you might be wondering if uh, your child is ready for kindergarten. And we've got that question a lot, as you might imagine, again, particularly given the circumstances this year. Um, and we just want to make sure that everybody understands that we know every student comes to us with different experiences, and that's okay. We expect that. Um, we meet students wherever they are, and we move them forward as fast as we can um, and as far as we can. Um, we are going to, as you know, do a screening for students, um, and the screening is really in order to give us an opportunity to gather baseline data, um, baseline information, so that we can create more balanced classes as we put the classes together for the fall. And it also gets, uh, lets, lets us get to know your children a little bit, um, get a glimpse into how they process information, how they respond to directions, that kind of thing. Um, we know that students are growing and changing every day, um, and this is really just a chance for us to, um, to start learning a little bit more about them. Um, there are other ways that we gather information about your children as well. So for those of, your, uh, those of you whose uh, children are currently in preschool, um, our kindergarten teachers are making visits and talking with the preschool teachers to get some information. Um, we are also, there's a parent garden, guardian questionnaire that was shared yesterday. So um, if you could fill that out, that would also be very helpful for us. So again, all of this information is used to help us create really balanced class lists for placement as we move forward. 
So when your child comes to the screening, again, they're going to be over the summer this year. We try to, um, we hope we'll have, we'll have more information about what school is going to look like um, for, you know, obviously as the summer progresses. Um, so during the screening, it's really, uh, you know, students will be in small groups. There'll be some small group activities that are really play-based um, and will provide insights in, for us into how they follow directions, interact with peers, um, navigate a classroom setting, um, and we will maybe do some early literacy and math skills, like whole group. They might have to write their name. Uh, we'll read a book. Um, they'll do some counting and number and letter recognition. So it's going to be very, very low key, just really for us to get a chance to get to, get to know them. Um, then the logistics, uh, the dates are the 19th, 13th, and 16th of August, or excuse me, the 9th, 13th, and 16th of August. Um, there are three times that'll be set up. We'll bring in between, um, the students will be in groups of five to eight, um, and we'll bring in no more than 20 students um, at a time, again, to, to move into those smaller groups. Um, you will get a Sign Up Genius link um, to sign up for a time that works for you. If you're away all of these days, don't worry, we will work with you to figure out um, you know, how best to get to know your child. So please don't be worried about that. Um, we are, as of right now, following all of our mitigation protocols that are in place, which includes social distancing of at least three feet. Um, students will wear masks and we hand sanitize um, you know, frequently. So that'll also be in place when we do our screening. Um, some parents also will ask about missing a day of school. Um, so there is uh, an information booklet that, booklet that you will get that'll have some detailed information about that. Um, our attendance policy, we follow the district attendance policy and that is on the website. So if your child is absent, um, number, you know, absence one through nine, um, they are excused with a note from a parent um, absences that are 10 or more within a school year require some kind of doctor's note, that kind of thing. Um, so we always, always need a written note from a parent or, um, or a guardian or the doctor in order, you know, when the school, uh, the student returns to school. So even if it's, again, if it's within that absence one through nine, which is um, excusable from a parent, we still need a written note when your child comes back to school um, explaining why they were out. So uh, we will get you more information about that. Please don't, um, don't worry, um, you'll get plenty of information, but I just wanted to bring it up because it's sometimes a, a question for parents. Um, so some important kindergarten dates and events. Again, as I said earlier, there are many things that we're still working on and that we're uh, in the planning stages on and we're, we're waiting uh, because they will be impacted by the guidance that we receive from the district um, and from the health department. So all of the events that are on here, uh, we are planning to hold. Um, as we have in the past, um, and then we will be able to confirm the details and get that information to you as soon as possible. I did want to bring to your attention our plan to have kindergarten split sessions in the beginning of the year. So um, traditionally at center school, um, our first nine to 10 days of school are half days. So students would come for a half day um, and then we would do some assessments in the afternoon. Here again, due to the circumstances, we did have um, students who were um, we, uh, we had students come in split sessions. So we had half of them come in the morning uh, from 8.30 to 11.15, and then the other cohort came in the afternoon from 12.45 to 3.25. And that whole configuration, what we, what we, uh, what we discovered, uh, although we wouldn't have necessarily chosen to do that um, because of the circumstances this year, that is the, the route that we took. Um, and we discovered that it allowed students to have much smoother transition, much less anxiety and a lot more will uh, switch into um, into center school. So um, they were much, they're just, it, it, was, it felt less stressful for kids to come with, <clears throat> excuse me, to come with a smaller group. They were able to get to know their teacher really well. The teacher was able to introduce them to the school routines, the, the, the um, kind of the practices in the classroom and get a good read on them um, as students and as, as little people. Um, so we are planning to do the same thing this year. I know, I, I, again, I, I speak from experience. I understand that this impacts your plans for childcare um, and your schedules for the start of the year. Um, and as soon as we have information with the details, we will get that to you so that you can make plans for yourself. So we are definitely actively working on that and we'll get it to you as soon as possible. Okay. Um, so another question we get a lot is what can I do to help my child be ready for kindergarten? Um, so you um, should have received yesterday an email with links to the PowerPoint that our, um, the presentation that our kindergarten teachers put together. There was a lot of information on there about this. Um, again, our kind of general uh, rule of thumb is to really work on self-help skills. Uh, make sure that they can put on and put on, uh, uh, excuse me, um, button and unbutton, zip and unzip their clothing. 
um, you know, food containers, that kind of thing. Make sure they feel comfortable using a bathroom. Um, you know, there's a there's a shared bathroom, um, so that that's important. Um, and just kind of be able to to um, have some interactions with peers, and, and we'll, we'll kind of take a look at that as well. And that's that's something you can work on as well at home. Um, don't forget to read. So don't skip that bedroom story, that bedtime story. Um, we are going to this year. Last summer I did as well. We did like summer Zoom bedtime stories. Um, uh, so I, I read to my kids, and then we zoomed them out with everybody else. So that'll be you'll get the link for that if you'd like to join us um, on Thursday evenings for Zoom bedtime stories. Um, but you know that's really important to keep reading. Um, and then our our uh, school expectations here are be safe, be kind, and be responsible. So anytime you can use that language and really reinforce that. Um, with your children um, as they're getting ready to come to school, that's helpful as well. And the last thing is to play. Kids need to play. They learn, they develop um, all kinds of skills through play. So please, um, you know, that's another really important thing to keep in mind. Just a little glimpse, glimpse into our kindergarten this year. Um, for those of you who have been wondering, our, you know, we are business as usual. Uh, it's just that everyone's in their own space. Um, so students are wearing masks and they have done a beautiful job at the masks. Uh, we were, you know, that was a, of course a question for us. We weren't sure, um, but really they've, they've done a, a fantastic job. Um, so students have their own space, they use materials, um, and they are really um, have, have risen to the occasion um, in terms of, of what we've seen. You know, we were talking earlier this year with the kindergarten team, and, and you know, there's a lot of discussion about what kids have lost um, over the course of this year, and, and it has been, there, there's no doubt that that's happened. But when we think about what they have gained and what the, the tremendous learning that we've seen in the classroom with our students, um, it's really, that, that's been um, gratifying as well. So despite all the challenges, we really, we really moved through and come through uh, in a great way. Um, students do have recess and development play. So they're playing near each other with their own materials, uh, but they're interacting and we, we've, we've figured out how to make that happen as well. Um, there's a focus on emotions. So in uh, the video, or excuse me, in the PowerPoint presentation from teachers, you saw there was a little video about ruler. Um, our students absolutely are in touch with how they're feeling and can share that um, and, and have been have begun to learn strategies for switching between how they're, you know, like um, if they're not feeling uh, happy or they're not feeling comfortable, how to, how to use some strategies to get closer to where they want to feel. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention is we have a lot of technology now um, in school. And again, we talked earlier, you know, there's, there's a hesitancy sometimes uh, or concern that um, technology, you know, like at, with, with young kids especially, is, is going to be detrimental. And what we found is that our students, again, when technology is used appropriately, they have the correct um, instruction, they understand why they're using it and how they're using it, um, that it's really been a, a really tremendous tool for uh, a, teaching a variety of skills. Um, BYOD is bring your own device. Um, we do have now, we have a bring your own device policy K to 12. So kindergartners coming in next year, um, they will use their devices daily uh, on some of the programs that we, that we have in place. Um, so if you'd like to purchase a device, you certainly can. And there was some information in the supply list that we shared um, yesterday um, in terms of what the specifications would, would, uh, would need to be. Um, and then we also will have devices available for students um, from the school as well. So if you have questions about that, we can we can certainly um, talk about that as well. And I think this is it. So thank you again for joining us today. We really do look forward to meeting you and your children and partnering with you. Um, please remember to fill out that parent guardian questionnaire um, and to look for your portal letter next week so that you can start um, the second part of the registration process and all of your documents. Um, that's going to be really important for us moving forward. Um, at this time, I am going to stop uh, sharing my screen and let you know that we have um, our, our kindergarten teachers are going to be available to go into breakout rooms um, to meet with uh, meet with any of you who'd like to. You do not need to stay in the breakout room. You do not need to come to the breakout room. Um, but if you're interested and would like to um, to be in a, a room and just kind of do a little bit of a, a, a question and just say hello, um, that would be, that's great. So I'm going to, I think my rooms somehow got, um, uh, deleted somehow. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a second to set those up. So again, feel free to stay if you'd like, if not, you don't have to stay. And we will be, um, we will be in touch with a lot more information. Um, and, and that Q and A will also be coming out so you can enter your questions there. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to
Mary Rose, here's a question on school start time. Thank you. So um, school has our school start time is officially um, 830. Sorry, I'm just looking. I just want to make sure I have this. Hold on one second. Sorry about that, guys. So again, we do start at 830. Um, that's when students can start arriving. Um, we do um, have this year, our, our, it's been a little bit different um, because of the because of the the kind of other situation that we have going on with um, cohorting and that kind of thing. Um, but the um, our official start time is eight thirty. Hope that is helpful. Okay, I think I've got it. So. You all are being very patient. Thank you. I don't know where what happened to all of my pre done ones. We're good to go. All right, so we have about five minutes in the break rounds, probably, and then I'll, I'll bring everybody back. Beth, I didn't put you in a room. Do you want to go to a room? No need. All right. Thank you so much for being here. There's a there's a couple more questions in the chat too. I'm going to copy that. Yep. I will. I think I'm going to copy all the questions and put them into our um, the FAQ.
I'm sorry, I got kicked from my classroom, from my break room. <laughs> so I, we, I, uh, we're, we're wrapping up. This is the end of our, our discussion today. Um, but I did want to, I know there are two other questions in the chat, uh, one about buses. So yes, uh, students are provided with bus transportation. Um, you are automatically, as soon as you register, your name goes on our list and the, uh, the bus department, uh, Debbie Jones is amazing. Um, she does all the bus routes over the summer. So whether or not you choose to, you don't, you don't have to opt into busing. Um, you automatically get um, get assigned a bus a bus stop. So uh, and you'll be given a bus uh, bus time. So um, that all happen automatically. And then as of right now, we are expecting that students will wear masks at school um, in the fall. Um, I don't know if that's going to continue, um, but that is uh, that is kind of the, the guidance right now. Um, and they do please you know, they take mask breaks. They uh, they do not wear them outside at recess in many cases. You know, so when we're outside, they're not that's not happening. But um, that is that is the plan as far as we know right now. Um, so uh, someone asked about bringing their own lunch. Students can bring their own lunch or buy lunch here at school. There's always a hot lunch option. Um, and students in the morning, they'll come in and, and most of the class teachers will share with you. There's a way that parent that students check in in the morning. So uh, part of that check-in is, you know, did you bring lunch from home today or are you buying lunch? And then they'll get the options and get to choose which option they're going to, they're going to have. Um, so that is either one of those, you know, whatever they decide to do is fine. Um, there's also snack time. Um, every day, so students will bring snack as well. We do encourage a healthy snack, um, you know, to make sure that we're again we have we have optimal learning experiences, um, and that we we have good you know kind of good um, uh, good fuel for that those brains as they're learning all day. Um, and then I just I think by for BYOD, um, you don't um, you don't need to. Um, you don't need to bring your own device, you can bring your own device. So what we find with students um, is if sometimes it's helpful for them to bring the device back and forth because then they're learning in school on the device they're going to use at home. So if there's a problem or a challenge or something that they're experiencing with their home device, um, if they have it, if they're bringing it back and forth to school, then we, we can make sure that we, we help uh, trouble uh, problem solve and, and troubleshoot those things. So um, they can, um, but either way, you don't have to buy a device. We will have devices here for school students as well here at school. Um, there's not a microwave for students to heat lunch. So a lot of uh, parents find success with a thermos. Um, you know, just making sure you have a really, a really good low, low there, many of them are really cute, um, a really good thermos and you can put hot lunch in there and usually um, it, it will stay warm through, uh, through until uh, the lunchtime. So lunches are here between 11 o'clock and um, 11 o'clock and one o'clock. Students will have lunch sometime within that two hour period. Um, so usually again, if they pack lunch in the morning, it's still warm for them when they get, um, when they get here to, and, and are ready for lunch. Um, you do not need to sign up for a school device right now. We are going to send you, believe me, this is just the start of the information you're going to get from us. Have no fear. Um, so we will send you anything else you need to know about getting a device. Uh, we want to make sure you have what you need. So, um, you know, again, um, we'll make sure that we get, get that information to you in terms of letting us know whether or not you need a device. Um, so in the classroom, um, so lunch this year was in the classrooms. Um, because we were not gathering together um, in the cafeteria, we don't know what the guidance is going to be yet for the fall. So uh, in a typical year, um, pre-COVID, we were all in the cafeteria. We had, you know, everyone had their own space. Every class is sat in, uh, together in the cafeteria with a lunch monitor for each class. And that, you know, that's what happened. So we'll have to see what happens. Um, in terms of needing a device at school, we do have um, online programs that kids use um, daily including um, ST, well, not daily, but over the course of the week. So we use ST Math um, and we also use Lexia. Um, and those are programs that kids do in school um, during some independent, like independent work time, that kind of thing. Um, and teachers also have a lot of resources in their, um, in their Google Classrooms. Um, so if there's, again, if there's a, a need to have some of that support or if there's a video, so sometimes um, teachers will be doing some um, uh, video uh, instruction. So uh, kids might watch an, inf an instructional video on something and then turn and have a discussion with a partner about it. So there's lots of ways that we've incorporated technology um, in an appropriate way. Um, and then we also have a lot of online resources for books. Um, so again, this year we were not really uh, sharing materials. Um, so students can do uh, research 
um, and that kind of thing on our on, on the um, the programs that we subscribe to, um, which then supports their their learning in that way as well. Um, so in terms of the amount of time that's spent on online programs, if, if a kindergarten teacher wants to jump in here, please feel free. Um, it, we, we, we're, our goal is to keep them in person live as much as possible. Um, would anyone like to add to that? If not, that's totally okay. I um, I, I'll jump in real quick. Um, so right now, I think my kids are on the computer at the most 20 minutes a day, if that. Um, I would say about 20 minutes is the max a day that they are on the computer. But like um, Mrs. Diamond said, um, you know, for our nonfiction unit, um, we had kids researching books on Pebble Go. So there might be some additional time. We are very mindful of screen time though. So we're not putting the kids in the front of a computer all day. We're just using the, the, the computer as a technology tool to help access the curriculum for them. And certainly at the beginning of the year also, we're gonna be teaching them how to use their devices for school. You know, so um, that that's a huge thing. And, and you know, another piece of this, you know, while we're not anticipating remote learning happening next year, um, the way it did this year, um, you know, if there's, if in the case of a snow day, like that was a, that was a, a, a huge help for us this year because we were able to learn remotely without having a snow day, um, which means we were able to get out on time at the end of the year and not prolong the school year. So um, we, we do wanna make sure that students um, continue to maintain and build those technology skills so that they um, are, we have some flexibility um, should there, you know, something happen and we need to, we need to go quickly um, to, a, to a remote situation. So again, we're not anticipating that's going to happen, but um, these are, as I mentioned earlier, um, some of the skills that kids learned, you know, we would not necessarily have thought that we were going to teach kindergartners how to use Google Classroom and how to use Zoom, but um, we did and they are phenomenal at it. So um, we want to make sure that we are continuing to build those skills for them. So. Does anyone have any other questions? Um, so uh, there's a question about the, the kind of device. Um, our, the district has purchased Chromebooks um, and we are trying to lean towards the um, touchscreen Chromebooks. They're just easier for kids. I don't know, again, if any kindergarten teachers are still on. If you need to go, okay, teachers, please feel free. Any, any staff, don't, you don't have to stay on if you have to go. Um, but if, I don't know if anyone has anything you'd like to share about the devices, if there's anything in particular. I think okay. the Chromebooks work well. Um, touchscreen prefer just because they don't really have, you know, to do the touchpad, especially to, um, Click different things on the screen can be difficult. So, a Chromebook, um, any tablet, um, any like tablet, like an iPad. Um, if you do get an iPad, um, you know, whatever device you use, I guess make sure your child is familiar with it. Um, I think that's the most important thing. Um, so, if it is an iPad, make sure that they know how to work it themselves. Um, and then, if it is an iPad, um, we use Google like the Google products, so Google Documents, um, Google Slides. So, having those downloaded on the iPad works better. Um, if you have a Chromebook, you don't you won't have to download any of those. There is also on the supply list that was shared yesterday that was linked. There is a link to the device that the district has purchased. Um, so if it's helpful that, to click on that, um, and then again, I mean, what we did with my daughter is we just looked, we waited to look for a deal, um, and that's you know that's what we got. So you got as Sarah said, making sure that they're familiar with it is most important. Um, so twins will be in the same cohort, absolutely. Um, and then we also, we, you know, again, we, we try to take parents' requests, if we can, into account in terms of when they're, um, when they see each other, that kind of thing. So some parents say, nope, we want them not to see each other at lunch and recess, we'll put them on different schedules, um, and others do want them to be able to see. So um, we typically will place them on the same schedule, so they'll be in two different classes, but they'll have the same lunch time, the same recess time, um, the same specials time, that kind of thing. Okay. Wi-Fi, everybody has Wi-Fi access. There is Wi-Fi across the school. Um, so yes, everyone will have access to Wi-Fi for sure when they're here. Okay. Is there anything else that we can answer now? Again, I'm going to share that Q that uh, uh, a form for you to, if you you know happen to think of a question as you go, um, we'll you know share that and we'll we'll get those answers out to everybody and try to include it in that way. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate all of your time. Thank you to the staff for staying late and, and being here with everybody. Um, and we are really thrilled um, to, to welcome you to Center School. 
and get to know you and really begin your child's, you know, kind of journey through the school system. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night.